Well, before we jump into the program, Holly, it's time for this week's Joke of the Week. Why was the cucumber mad? Why? Because he was too chilled or something? <laughs> No, because... Chill it as a cucumber? No, yeah, uh, as cool as a cucumber. Cucumber, okay. Because it was in a pickle. Yeah. Cucumbers are pickles. This week's joke is brought to you by Rescue.com. Rescue.com is American-made products to keep your family, home, and yard protected from pests, insects like wasps, hornets, yellow jackets, flies, ants, and more. Learn more at Rescue.com. That's R-E-S-C-U-E.com. Well, dealing with problems in your garden, there's a lot of them which you can deal with. Uh, and we're going to go through a few of them here in the time that is allotted in segment one, Holly. Correct. So we're going to talk about some problems. So first one is powdery mildew. This is a common problem, especially as we go into August. We're not quite in August yet, but it happens a lot wet, the wet, in August. The wet night, yeah. Yeah, and as... As summer, I don't want to say summer comes to an end, but it's as we're kind of shifting a little bit towards fall. You're like, August is not the end of summer, and it's not. But as we shift towards fall, the days do start to get shorter again, and the nights have a tendency to move a little bit cooler, not aggressively, but a little bit cooler, and this causes this chance for powdery mildew. So what happens, what occurs is that during the day, especially in times like August in most places, there's often a lot of humidity. And with that humidity during the day and then a the little bit of the shorter days and the cooler nights, it tends to stick around. And so that can settle on the leaves of pretty much any plant that has flat leaves like um, squashes, pumpkins, cucumbers. Beans, beans. cucumbers. Yeah, squashes. So you get this like powdery mildew and it looks just like powder when you rub your finger on it. Um, you can kind of feel it and it's a, it's a common problem. So a few things you can do is you can look for a disease resistant variety and you're like, well, I already planted these. So <laughs> obviously that's something you could do next year. You can make sure that you do space them apart properly. A lot of times this happens because the leaves are overlapping. So it gives them a chance for the humidity to kind of just like hang out. Um, but the other thing you can do is you can take, you're basically um, going to take a lot of, there's a lot of household remedies. There's vinegar. Well, well, stop from watering above and getting the leaves wet. That's part of it. Well, if it rains, you yeah, can't Yeah, you really. can't do that. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So obviously, like, uh, uh, you want to avoid getting the leaves wet if you can. And incre uh, increase air circulation in order to get what moisture is on the leaves to dry Powdery mildew hates water but loves new growth and warm weather between 68 and 77 degrees is ideal for this the spores to uh, be to develop. Right. So with powdery mildew, let's talk about some solutions here. What you can do is you can, aside from that, is you can find a homemade solution. We've used vinegar and milk, and so you don't not together. These are two different solutions. So you take one to three parts of um, vinegar to water and then you spray it on the powdery mildew it's going to help break it up and then there's the same thing for milk some people baking soda is one a tablespoon of baking soda with a quart of water spray that uh, on the plant thoroughly the high pH of the baking soda makes the it alkaline which prevents the mildew spores from thriving the purpose we want to break up the spores is because it would create a, a layer of um, Per, uh, prevention of sun getting to the plant and the plant is basically going to die because it doesn't have the photosynthesis or the, uh, allows the sun to penetrate the leaves and uh, do what the plant needs to do in the summer. Right. So that's powdery mildew. So let's talk about blight. There's different types of blight, but the most common blight is um, tomato. Tomato blight. What's it called? Early blight. Early blight. And then there's late blight. Late but we're going to yeah. we're going to deal with early blight because that's the time in which we're in right now. Right, so there's there's blight that you can get through the air, and then there's blight that you can get through your soil. So we're going to talk about the soil blight that happens to your tomatoes, and this is not too late to to help. Um, I don't want to say eliminate because it might not eliminate it at this point, but to help control. Well, you're never going to eliminate the early blight in the soil. You can control it and and reduce yeah, but the. I'm saying like you might have some already. Right, right, yeah. and and we can help you with that. Yes. You're going to notice discoloration on the lower leaves of the plant. The plants are supposed to be lush and green, but you're going to see blotchiness. You're going to see rusty-looking uh, pigmentation or yellowish or even white areas. 
typically at the lower portion of the leaves because the soil has splashed from the soil from the ground level up to the leaves and discolored it, li- them. That is the early blight, and if left uncontrolled, it will progressively work up the plant, and then by the time fall comes, you're going to have a plant with a bunch of fruit and no leaves, and it's actually dead because it doesn't have the capabilities of absorbing the sunlight. So what you want to do is if you do see that infection on the plant leaves, do not be uh, scared to remove them. Cut off up to 25% of the plant if necessary in order to discard that infection of the plant. Then you can uh, control that by clearing out the lower six to eight inches of leaves and branches coming off of the main stem. Mulch underneath there. And if you are in the, uh, you can also apply a handful of yellow whole grain cornmeal prior to mulching. That also has a beneficial bacteria in it called trichoderma that will fight the bad bacteria, which is the early blight in your soil. Doesn't eliminate it, doesn't make it disappear. It reduces it and fights it. By doing this, by mul- uh, hand- a whole grain cornmeal, yellow, mulching, continually trimming the bottom of the tomato plants, the reduction of early blight will be very visual, visible. You will reduce it by 80 or 90%. Sometimes in, in our instance with the heavy mulch, we don't have it at all because of those three steps. Right. So there's that. Um, so lots of weeds. This is a common problem, especially it seems like with the warmer Rain every rain, 72 yeah, hours. Rain every 72 hours, the warmer weather, etc. So one thing is that you can do is good old pull in the weeds and get them as early as possible. This will help eliminate their their um, possible propagation that a lot of weeds just automatically do and also will help it seem like a less daunting task. Otherwise, you can use things like weed weed um what's it called weed Bar- barrier? barrier cloth yeah, barrier cloth um well we <clears throat> we had joseph uh Lo- loof house on the program mm, about a month or so ago and he's out in the desert where he does have weeds and there's a lot of weeds he says and, and you can go back and, and check that out in the archives and podcast and in studio video replay and he allows his p- garden to just run run na- nature's course he doesn't weed and then he selects the vegetables and the fruits that have survived and save those seeds because those are the strongest of those that have grown so he doesn't spend time weeding he allows you know selection of the strongest and then plants those the next year but you may not choose to let your garden look like a pasture in the front or backyard because of whatever reason you have so removal of weeds in a at smallest stage is the easiest and preventing them from going to seed regardless if you're using weed cloth or weed barrier is also the way in which you can reduce the amount of weeds in ground or raised bed that you are going to deal with in a container in a grow bag you're not it's going to be very very simplistic in order to control those weeds absolutely so you want to get ahead and if you feel like it's a daunting task, you can do a little bit every evening. You can, you know, get your kids involved, grandkids, whatever. Um, you know, say, we're going to go to the garden and pull some weeds and we're going to ice cream after dinner, blah, blah, blah. Like, there's a lot of, uh, you know, make it make it fun. <laughs> you can do that. And, and real quickly, before we get out of this segment here, inconsistent watering is a problem of a lot of issues from... Uh, blossom in rot on tomatoes to blossom in rot on uh, zucchini plants to un- in- undeveloped and improperly developed fruits and vegetables yes pollination is a, is a big factor but if it doesn't have the consistent watering to allow the proper nutrients and minerals to be uptaken you're going to have a problem so keeping the soil moist or damp like a sponge not wet real wet and then dry out to a bone and then wet again that's going to damage your plants and the production of your garden well waltons has everything you need for your barbecue and for hunters and fisher people yeah we know you care about where your food comes from you got to think about you know the meat aside from the fruits and vegetables at waltons you can get all the equipment seasoning and supplies to make sausage jerky and any other meat product your way to your high standards do you want to make snack sticks that people will actually like? Walton's does have a informational site called meatjustics.com with a, a uh, 
a community of almost 15,000 users who help give their opinion and guidance on meat processing issues. You can also go to wallensinc.com. They have everything you need. They have um, all sorts of meat grinders, mixers, sausage stuffers. They have seasonings, uh, spices, spice mixes, all the good stuff there at wallensinc.com. Wallens everything but the meat. You can use code GROW50, GROW50 to save 10% off your orders of $50 or more.